This time on the show, finishing off the photo frame case mod, writing software without touching a line of code, crafting packets with the HP utility, an open source Dropbox alternative based on OpenSSH and RSync, and a multi-threaded steganography brute forcer. All that and more this time on Hack5. This episode of Hack5 is brought to you by GoToAssist Express. Support smarter with GoToAssist Express the Motorola Zoom, and Domain.com. Your next big idea starts at Domain.com. Hello and welcome to Hack5. My name is Darren Kitchen. And I'm Shannon Morse. And this is your weekly dose of technology, the show where we do all sorts of fun things. Including, like what? Well, including voiding warranties and writing code and doing things involving packets. Actually, we're going to have a lot of fun with packets later. Oh, yeah, in the mods. It's pretty. Yeah, it's getting it's a lot prettier. I didn't I'm hurt myself in I'm feeling some techno Ah, you're feeling yeah. All right. It's nice. Yeah, well, that's the prototype up on the wall. We've got the second one that we're going to be making Ooh. a lot sexier with a couple of these. Oh my god, I used to have things like this in my car. In your car? Yeah, way back in like the early 2000s. You know, like... <laughs> Do you have to eat everything? Yes. You know, it bumped to the music. No. Yes. You had one of the like... What, like, yeah. what were you rocking? What was your little... My old Ford. Your Ford what? Taurus. Taurus, yeah. really? It was sad. <laughs> Is that your first car? Uh, second, but yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'd like to see a picture of that. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, I'm going to be, you know, cleaning up the rest of the case mod, adding some features, nice. got some great feedback cool. on that, and um, I hear, and then I'll be playing with some packet stuff, and I hear you're doing some programming? I am doing programming, though not really. There's no script Now, required. normally we have Jason Applebaum on here, and he shows us how to get into the IDE and set up our development environment, and the variables, and the loops, and the while statements, and the... Yeah, no. No? <laughs> not me. Which cases with the I'm going to show you how to script without scripting and create your own little programs. Sweet! Yeah. I'm looking forward to that. It's cool. Why don't we just go ahead and start it off right with the hacker headlines. You guys know that last week we reported nearly 60 nasty Trojans hit the Google Android marketplace and mm. well, Google responded by delisting the publisher and using their infamous app remote kill switch on the affected quarter million users. Well, Google wow. has actually <laughs> released a security tool to clean up the mess. Well, well said security good, right? tool has been found on an unregulated third-party Chinese marketplace injected with some delicious botnet code. <laughs> yeah, well, anyway, That's this botnet kind of code funny. actually has the ability to send text messages. We've seen stuff like this at Oh, uh, So there's this group of hackers that has figured out a way to scam Microsoft Xbox Live points by producing working character strings like the ones you get on the back of the points cards, you know, mm. Xbox Live cards. So the little scratchy thingies. Yeah, exactly. They released the scheme onto a website that would generate the codes for you, which is kind of cool. But Microsoft lost about $1.2 million in points. And they have since blocked the site, which kind of stinks. That's basically counterfeit. I mean, that is counterfeiting, it right? Is. But the brute force counterfeiting. You can't do that in the RL, and who are no, you going to call? you can't. Like here in the States, it's all about the Secret Service, but what, Microsoft, come on, man. <laughs> yeah, so they don't have a way of knowing who did this, mm. and they'll probably have to redo the entire algorithm to fix it. Well, maybe when they fix it, they can come up with a point system that makes some sense, like the that Nintendo one. That would be awesome, one, where because you know how much the you points are spent. really expensive right now, and, really and they're crazy. Okay, we're getting off on a <laughs> rant. Let's get back on track. Okay. Obviously, Microsoft, not so secure, but your Linux box might not be either. Ooh. A router rooting bit of malware has been discovered. Once run, the malware, posing as an ELF file, brute forces network routers. Now, if successful, the malware will actually set up an IRC backdoor on the system. Now, this router router, router router, router router? Router router. Router router. The router router router. Now, it comes <laughs> just months after the Chuck Norris botnet, which basically attacked uh, machines with routers using default passwords. Chuck Norris will own your router. <sighs> well, well, yeah, if your Linksys password <laughs> is password or default or admin or administrator or, yeah, change your passwords. Be careful what you run. Be careful. And also be careful if you visited George Hotz's website between January 2009 and now because Sony may know about it. Not good. In a decision last Thursday, Magistrate Joseph Sparrow granted Sony a subpoena. Subpoena? A sub... sub a subpoena. A subpoena. A subpoena. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they granted him a subpoena! They can see the logs! Something's wrong with you yeah. sometimes. So, 
I, I and they also they, they granted them a subpoena for YouTube and for Google and then yes. you know George Hot's provider Bluehost they've actually been asked to turn over server logs IP logs and just about anything pertaining to the jailbreak that they were supposed to. Come on, man! Actually, I think we're going to be talking about this a lot more in the future because where you host your stuff is very important. Yes. Now, what could be more fun than Gary's mod? How about playing it with a Kinect? John B. used OpenNI to gather skeletal coordinates from the Kinect and pass it through to Gary's mod so that it can play the physics fun while getting some exercise. Now, how about some awesome. Gary's mod music videos next time, huh? Dude, yes! With little baby kittens. What? Meow. With what now? What? Nothing. Baby kittens. That's right, as you guys know, we had a lot of fun this Sunday with the Crack the Code Challenge. Shannon, why don't you tell us a little bit about those that completed the challenge? Did you have what it took to compete in our Crack the Code Challenge, brought to you by GoToAssist Express? These fine Hack 5 viewers did last Sunday. Mad props go out to Paul, Sork, Richard, Raging Cake, Jenkins, John, and Joey, as well as our returning champions, Netshroud, Leo, and Tristan. A big thanks go out to all that participated, joined the live stream and the chat, and of course, go to Assist Express for sponsoring our Hack 5 Lab Network. We had an overwhelming reception with more participants than virtual machines. However, we'll be increasing our capacity this week, as well as getting the <clears throat> Thunder Kitten Assault Force involved. Stay tuned for info on the next, even bigger Crack the Code Challenge. And be sure to tune in next week as we'll have a detailed walkthrough on how the challenge was completed. So now, let's take a moment to thank GoToAssist Express for making the challenge possible. If you provide technical support to clients, colleagues, friends, or family, have you found an easy, cost-effective way without being there in person? Well, the best way for me to provide technical support is to do it online with GoToAssist Express. GoToAssist Express lets you view and control another computer online, so you can quickly resolve technical issues. I've used it to help friends learn how to use new software, or even fix family computer problems without being there in person. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Try GoToAssist Express free for 30 days. For this special offer, visit GoToAssist.com slash HAK5. Again, that's GoToAssist.com slash HAK5 for a free trial. Just kind of not into starting everything with void main pound include beer.h. <laughs> you need to check out yep. this product from Radical Breeze, and here to show us all about it is Smurfette. No? Excuse me? Smurfette? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe? No. Um, you know what? Go. Uh, what? Please. I'm sorry, but I'm Smurfette, no, that's not gonna work for me. Go shave. Go shave that thing that you have going on right here. So, Radical Breeze made this, com made this really cool program called Illumination Software Creator. Now, I would love to have the ability to make my own software applications without having to know any kind of coding language. But it seems like even to do something as simple as a Hello World script, you still have to know at least a few lines of scripting. Not anymore. With Illumination Software Creator from Radical Breeze, you can write software apps without the code by using a unique, easy interface. So there's a couple of requirements first off. If you're using Windows, you need to have Python installed. And it can work on Windows, Linux, Ubuntu, Mac, Android, and this thing called Flex. So I wanted to give you a nifty little demo of how this works. It's pretty easy once you get the hang of it. So you just go to the website, download it like usual, and follow the directions on the requirements page. Open it up after you've extracted it. And it asks you at first if you want to uh, register it, and well, I don't, so I'm just going to hit cancel. Continue trial. Starts you off with an application that is launched, and it gives you this ending box for quitting your application. So over here, I'm just going to do something really, really easy. I'm just going to make this thing that says Hack 5 Rules. It shows some nice little text, and then it quits after you hit OK. So that's pretty easy, right? Yeah, I thought so. So first off, you want to click on a new project, which I've already done, and you want to add your boxes. So I want to set up this text. So what I'm going to do is add a set, a set text box and then add a variable that I can reuse for several different commands. So go down to text, 
and drag over your box. Nice little GUI interface. And I'm going to set a variable for this text box over here under variables. Variable name, I'm just going to call it hack 5 rules because it totally does, right? Variable type is text, and the default text is going to say hack 5 space rules. We're awesome. And then press OK. Under set text, I can add the hack 5 rules to the custom text line. And then for the message box, I can add the variable for hack 5 rules. So I'm going to add a user interface, which is a message box. Drag my box over here. And I'm going to use the variable hack 5 rules. And same with this one. Variable hack 5 rules. There we go. Now, with Illumination Software Creator, you also have to make sure that you connect each and every different piece of the script that you put together in this, in this box. So I need to drag a line from each box. Having some issues with my boxes. There we go. And stick the other one down there. OK, so I have it all set up nice and easy, so hopefully when it runs, it will work. To test the running process, you just go over up here to run, click on python-desktop, and it should ask me to save it. So I'll save it as Hack5. Nice and simple. Press save, and it should pop up. I hope it works. Yay, it worked. So it gives me a little text box that says Hack5 rules. I press close and it quits the application. Nice and simple. You can learn tons of scripting through this and you never have to actually, well, learn any Java code to write a little hello world. You can just stick in the little boxes and there you go. You're good to go. If you have any questions about this or if you have another program that is nice and easy like this one, email me at feedback at hack5.org. I love to get your feedback. And now a brief word from, from Darren. From me. From Darren. Yeah. Okay. Well, Hi. Thanks to give me a great opportunity to go and get a beer. And I want to tell everybody about the hack tip. <gasps> the hack tip? It's hack tip hey. time. Now we've talked about screen, we've talked about packet sniffers, but today we're going to put it all together with a new tool for crafting our own packets. Now HPing3 is a TCP IP packet assembler. It's modeled after the Unix ping command, but it can do so much more. Not just ICMP, this thing will craft TCP, UDP, even raw IP packets. So here on the top, you can see that I've actually, in my screen, I have TCP dump running, and I'm taking a look at F0. So if I issue, say, the ping command to 66, 11, 227, 169, I can see there are my packets going through at the top. I can see my results at the bottom. That's all well and good. But say I didn't want to just ping a server. Say I figured, hey, I wonder if there's an HTTP d uh, daemon sitting over there waiting for me to make web connections to it. Well, then we could do what's called a half-open SYN connection. So for that, let's just go ahead and dive right in. I'm going to go ahead and issue hping3, tac c1 for one packet and then TAC I F0 is my interface, TAC S for the source port, in this case, I don't know, anything, one, two, three, four will work, and then TAC P, now this is the port of the server on the other side, we're gonna say 80, and then again that address, 266, 11, 227, 169. And if I run that, I can see that I had a 0% packet loss. I actually sent my SYN, I got a SYN ACK back, but I did not complete the three-way handshake, thus making it you know, an open, uh, or I'm sorry, a half open SYN connection. Now, just to use an example, I'm going to go ahead and run the same thing, but this time we're going to change the destination port to 81. So come over here, change that to 81. And you can see that I have 100% packet loss because there's nothing running on port 81. So, you know, I know that uh, that's just scratching the surface of what is possible with a traffic generator like HPing and a debugging setup with TCP dump on top of a different screen. And of course, I'm looking forward to hearing about your favorite packet assemblers. So what's rocking your world? If you got any tips, send them by. Tips at hack5.org. We'll be back in just a bit after a quick word from one of our sponsors.
The Motorola Zoom is the first tablet powered by Android 3.0 Honeycomb with a 10.1 inch HD widescreen display, 3D experience, and a 1 gigahertz dual core processor. It's fully flash enabled for video rich web with tabbed windows for multitasking and Chrome bookmark syncing with Google Maps that you can tilt, rotate, and zoom in in 3D with Photo Real Street View. It's 4G upgradable, so you can leap from 3G to Verizon 4G LTE and the mind-melting upper limits of speed. Last week, we started the case mod picture frame thing on the wall because motherboards are beautiful and they should be on display. We got a lot of great feedback and uh, thank you guys so much for sending that in. I love to hear about that and I'm sure I will be doing more of these and making them even better. And that's kind of one of the things that we'll be doing uh, with this part two as we really finish off this one so we can hang it on the wall. Um, and I have a couple of questions here I figured I would just go ahead and address off the bat. Uh, JT writes in that he'd like to see some slick cable management on the outside of the cases for power and ethernet and avoiding a cable splitter. Um, you know, really if I were to do this again, like I said, I would put an actual ethernet jack here, but you know, uh, power over ethernet, maybe if you're doing like a smaller board, that'd be really cool. Uh, also, I think I talked about how it'd be neater to do a Wi-Fi dongle if this wasn't a server that was gonna be doing gigabits of data. He was also wondering about the CPU temperature of the stock cooler and if that was gonna be an issue in the vents. Yes, it actually is. Uh, that guy was running for the Crack the Code Challenge on Sunday, and I actually just kind of propped it open. Um, the other one I didn't, however, and it didn't get too hot. So, you know, that's all anecdotal, but I will be putting in some vent holes today. Another uh, wrote in, uh, Tricky Voice from England, he says, I uh, love in the picture frame case mod. <clears throat> I have a machine that runs a low power media server and it's been bolted to the wall for over two years and it's had little use because he likes his virtual server more. And he goes on to say that it's actually the guts of his old girlfriend's laptop whose cat shattered the screen. Anyway, so uh, basically he gutted a laptop put it on the wall. That's really cool because you've got a lot less components, a lot tinier power supply, all of that good stuff, Wi-Fi built in. That's a pretty neat way to recycle. Thanks for sending that in, Tricky. Also, um, Ant writes in to say, hey Darren, I just watched the picture frame case mod. I saw that you joined all of the wires at the same length. If you intended to put the heat shrink around them, you could have a huge bulge. If you offset the joints, and he's gone ahead and actually put together, check this out, an image showing how it should be done, then it would look a lot better rather than having a big bulge of, of crimps. So yeah, that's actually a great way to do it. Uh, the other way I was thinking was the old just twist the wires around each other, pop some solder on it, and throw on some heat shrink. We'll be talking about prettying up things in just a bit. Thank you for sending in the diagram, Ant. That's a good technique. And then Luke wrote in to say, uh, let me just get started by saying it looks incredible. I have such a simple, uh, it's such a simple idea, but it looks good. He would prefer to do LEDs himself, maybe even like R RGB LEDs, like doing different colors. I talked about this with my roommate Dave about how it'd be really neat to change the color depending on like CPU load or something like that. You walk in, your picture frame is red and that means that all hell's broken loose. That'd be pretty neat. Maybe a follow-up project. I think I could do it with a serial port and an Arduino, a little cron, cron job and some shell scripts. That'd be fun. He'd like to know how the backboard has the motherboard mounted to it, stays in place. And he says, they saw the little metal tacks here, these little tabs that hold this board in that they just bend in and hold it in place. He just wants to know if, if there's any concerns about it falling forward, uh, about it falling off. We actually have it up here on the wall and it's not falling forward. It's holding on just fine, you know, and pretty much on the back of these guys, you can see it's just a wire and there's just, you know, a screw on the wall and pretty much comes down here, grabs that. And uh, I get out the level tool and make sure it's, not crooked, but yeah, I know, right? Um, so thanks for writing in about that, Luke, but so far so good with those. Uh, if I was really concerned, I guess I could reinforce them, but I don't, I don't think that's gonna be an issue. And then finally, Alex writes in to say, Darren, in your photo frame case mod, I noticed that there really is a lot of airflow from the heat sink. Is it good enough for the, uh, is the cracks good enough to, uh, uh, or is the heat sink from the processor? Um, anyways, just talking about it being really, really hot. Uh, basically, 
Uh, yeah, like I said, it got warm, but we're going to alleviate that today. So here's what's on the agenda now. I'm going to get rid of this ancient piece of deprecated technology. Um, we are going to be putting in holes for ventilation, also for power and ethernet, so we can actually plug this bad boy in. And then we're gonna do some prettying up of these cables, make it look as nice as it can. And then we're gonna be putting in the LAN party favorite. It's called cathode time. Your computer isn't leet until it's glowing orange. Actually, these are white. I figured it'd be a little classier with the red bezel and all that good stuff, so we'll see. So let's just do the easy stuff first. Um, cold cathodes are really inexpensive. Uh, used to get them from like Directron, but there are plenty of retailers online that'll sell these, or if you've got a cool computer shop in your town, uh, might want to check there. You can get them in varying colors and with like little boards that will like pulsate to the music and stuff like that. This, I wanted to go simple, white. Uh, I found, the ones that sell just one at a time in their own little with the inverter, it's not necessarily, this was my backup if I was gonna do a third. I think I'm gonna do a different case mod for the third one. Uh, but I did find a dually pack, so we're gonna go ahead and set one of these guys up. And pretty much everything you need to get started is in here. They just kinda tie into one of your existing Molex. And what I like about these is that they come with a back plane for your PCI, which will uh, allow you an on-off switch. That's nice. For the most part, this thing's going to be on, but I can, I can imagine some circumstances, maybe spouse circumstances, in which, in which case the, uh, the server might not be lit up. I don't know. We'll see. So I'm just going to unscrew some of these. And these are just gonna plug right into your Molex. In fact, they're in line if we had something that was already plugged into this guy. And then that plugs into the little blue transformer. And then there's ports on the side for both of the cold cathodes. And now if I flip the switch to turn this guy on, Instant rave action or something, oops, 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 I guess. Now, as far as fixing these are concerned, they actually provide you with the essentials. Velcro. I love Velcro. I love Velcro so much. And someone agrees with me that it was included in the package. All right, so I've got them mounted. I just kind of put them in the center somewhere. You won't be able to see them so much because of the bezel. And now it's time to get working on our cable management and also printing that up. So I'm just gonna pull this. And let's start at the beginning, a good place to start, with our ATX connector here, as well as our little 12 volt guy that we did earlier. The only thing I haven't done is this stupid Cat5 cable I really should have put a jack over here, but next one. And I'm gonna get my power supply out this time. Not motherboard as I mistakenly said several times last week. And the hard drive. Now my first order of business is prettying up this cable here of multicolor goodness. And if this was a more expensive power supply, it might have like a nice sheath over it or something like this. It might be modular, it might not have excess cables that I don't need. That'd be great, but considering we're using this Apevia ITX AP250W, I just saved myself 10 emails right there, uh, it, it's kind of ugly. So what you can actually get from those same vendors that I was just speaking about before 
is some of this loom goodness. And we're just going to put a little bit over the ATX connector and that's going to make it look really sexy. Now, this stuff you'll probably have to order. I haven't been able to find it in a store and my roommate Dave has been gracious enough to lend it to me. So that's nice. We got a little bit of that stuff going on. However, there's a rat shack in your area. You can just find yourself some generic loom. It's plastic, it's goodness. It doesn't look as sexy as that, but we may actually use a bit of this later on. See that? It looks nice. And it pretty much just unravels and you, you run the cables through. I might do that here for this 12 volt just so I use lots of different materials. Now what's nice about this is it opens up quite a bit. I can actually shove this in here. So what I've done is just put the ATX connector inside of here and now I'm just going to trim up some of this excess before we attach it all down. And you'll see, you're probably wondering, aren't you doing that backwards? And well, kind of, you'll see. Now the trick is to take the modder's other best friend, wire ties. And so we have the front of this going straight into this like a snake. And I'm going to go ahead and put one of these wire ties around it. And with that tightened up quite a bit, what this is going to allow me to do now, let's see, figure out how much I need. I need about yay much. Now this will just open up on the other end and go inside out. And it's kind of like some of those uh, Chinese finger traps. All right, how about that? That looks pretty good, I gotta say. You know, you're not gonna see this fray stuff because it's at the bottom. And if I were to go back and do this again, I probably would have used a little bit more, say this was my own computer with a cool case side window because it's 2003. Um, then yeah, I to definitely would have given myself some more, looped it around again, and, uh, and used the modder's best friend. So, with all that done, last week, as opposed to the way that our first one was done, we actually ran our 12 volt, extended the wires, and, um, and ran them under, under the motherboard. And unfortunately, I did not offset them so that I do have a giant bulging thing of crimps. And nobody wants a giant bulging thing of crimps. Like, ask around. Believe me on that. So, what I'm going to do here is take just a bit of this stuff, which is very similar. In fact, I could use this for consistency, but I really want to use some of this good loom stuff. And really, it's just a matter of cutting uh, the parts that you need. And it loops around like so. What I actually used to use in my like former case mod life of back when I was a Unreal Tournament star, you know, uh, back in the land party days of yore, um, I was big into actually going over to your auto parts store and finding some of that big thick loom that you use on like cars. Okay, you know, this is a good demonstration of the difference between this good stuff and this and why I should have taken Ant's advice and not, and, and staggered these so I didn't have a bulge. And that guy sitting happy there. Let's now tidy up the rest of the cables. Our cold cathodes. Thankfully, they both are on their own individual strands and they just kind of plug into this little inverter guy here. So I'm going to set these down and get them in place and then worry about all this junk, right? Thankfully, I do have a little strip of Velcro around here. And what I want to do, oops, is take this entire mess and just kind of bundle it up because nobody will ever see it. That was half the idea of the bezel. Uh, the inverter itself will actually Velcro to the bottom here. So I do want to just test fit these wires and make sure that they fit. All right, and with our little package bundled up here, I'm going to go ahead and plug in our SATA drive. Now, finally, the last thing that we're going to have to do here is deal with, one, how are we going to have to plug this in uh, and get the Ethernet out? And two, how are we going to get any ventilation going on here? And for that, 
we have this tool. Now, there's a million different ways to go about this. Basically, the way that the power supply is set up is that it's butting up against the side here of one of our photo frames. And really, we just need a hole. In fact, the more I think about it, modding, construction, any of that, is just a lot of Boolean addition and Boolean subtraction. And unfortunately, I can't just shove another poly in there and do a remove. So I have to use tools. So I have a bunch of different tools that could all potentially do it, like this guy. However, um, I guess the MDF or whatever this stuff is made of and the speed of this and all that really was just causing a lot of smoke here in the studio. Uh, another option is to use, that's on, this guy. And I should not be playing with it. Anyway, uh, but that's not, that's not creating a uh, pretty cut. I'm not happy with it. Um, so I'm just going to resort back to one of the ways that I did the first one, my beta one, if you will, and that is to use a hole saw. Now I've used a bigger, I'm going to use a bigger hole saw this time because it's going to make a, a much bigger hole that I'm not going to have, you know, problems getting, uh, the AT power supply connector in. Um, however, I will say if I were to do this again, I would probably, as Jason mentioned here, put a panel like a, uh, well, like, a, like basically a wall plug. You, you've seen those where you can get a wall plug. You can also get a wall plug with modular, you know, different jacks in it, whether it be coax or cat five. So that'd be kind of a neat thing to have here as long as it's not like biscuit color. It's literally just to move this aside and then drill a hole. I know, it's gonna get fun. Voila, check that out. Now I'm gonna go ahead and make my first cut and though we are in a garage technically, I do wanna kinda of keep this set area a little pretty. So for that, I have a hose connected to a vacuum cleaner. However, I don't have three hands. So ladies and gentlemen, Jason Applebaum. Thank you, I really appreciate this. The helmet isn't necessary. <laughs> Nor are the goggles. I no one's... <laughs> All right, that's one happy hole. Now for a second for the, uh, the vent coming off the heat sink, or the power supply that is. And also, why not? Jason vacuumed up a screwdriver. I'm not making this up. I'm not making it up. One of the itty bitty ones. We're gonna continue the show. Well, that wasn't supposed to break. Okay, I'm gonna be honest, guys. Didn't come out beautiful. Came out a little bit better than this guy, but still, oh yeah. Paul's agreeing with me here that I should definitely, on the next one, try to do something like a, uh, an actual jack. Maybe I'll take like an extension cable and like mod that or something so that you can plug into something on the side rather than just cutting a hole for the power supply. I agree, you don't need to email me about it, I know. All right, well, it is functional though. And honestly, people that are admiring your motherboard aren't necessarily peeking around the side to see your, uh, well maybe they are, I don't know. I'm ready to put the rest of the stuff in. That's where I'm getting at. Did I mention that the really long Cat5 cable was not a great idea? I wouldn't recommend doing it this way either. Well, hey, would you look at that? It all fit. Next on Hack Tips, how to plug your power supply in. And would you look at that? It all just kind of comes together. We'll just whoop, slide this over. No locks. And would you look at that? I am very happy with the way that this guy came out. I mean, all things considered, I, st I still could have prettied up 
this side a little bit better. Uh, I still am gonna have to go back and put some uh, holes in for my um, ventilation. And I'm thinking either the top or bottom is really best for that. And really, it just comes down to using a one inch hole saw and some of these guys. Now these are great because you couple that with a couple of screws and boom, it just, I don't know, adds a little something to it. I don't think I'm gonna need to use like a 60 millimeter fan or something like that. Honestly, I was running this for the entire Hack the, or Crack the Code challenge for like three hours straight. Didn't have any problems with it, but we'll see. I'm gonna put them up on the uh, wall. I'm gonna run some uh, tests. Maybe I'll, uh, I'd say run Prime 95 or something like that, but this is a Linux machine, so I'm gonna have to find something to just figure out Pi for the rest of its life, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you what I uh, run into heat-wise. So that's all the time we have for today to finish up the case mod. We may come back to this at a later point, add some doodads, but for the moment, I'm gonna say, man, does that not accomplish the goal of saying, hey, technology is beautiful, let's mount it, let's put it on the wall, let's just uh, admire all of the countless engineers. I mean, we're talking thousands, maybe millions of engineers over the course of you know the computing history to bring us to where we are today. And this is just gorgeous stuff, so it should be up on a wall. Anyway, that's it for the modding segment. I look forward to your feedback. Of course, you guys know, send that over to feedback at hack5.org. Last week's trivia question was, in War Games, this character gave his name to the first computer game that Lightman finds. The answer is Stephen Falcon. This week's trivia question is, this composer of Blade Runner was an inspiration to the recently released OST by Daft Punk, awesome, of Tron Legacy. If you know the answer, go over to hack5.org slash trivia for your chance to win some sweet Hack5 swag. And now, a word from our sponsor. If you're a systems administrator or a webmaster, you know that SSL is critical for securing all sorts of transactions. We're talking e-commerce, forums, emails, really any kind of sensitive data. And if you're looking for SSL or just considering switching out your current SSL provider, you should really check out Domain.com's offering. Their Thought SSL 123 product is really cool. Here's the reasons why. First of all, it builds trust. Thought's been around for like a long, a really long time. They're one of the most trusted names in SSL. It's also really, really easy to implement. Seriously, it's the only thing you need to encrypt your site and it's got the strongest encryption available. And they are so quick at getting you certified. You get your you know, certificate and like, we got ours in just hours. And it's also really affordable. Check it out. Using the coupon code HAK5, you can actually get it for under 40 bucks a year. And that's really the best price online. Bottom line, if you need SSL, and let's just face it, we all do, Domain.com's SSL123 product is the best. And I gotta say thank you to Domain.com because they've been sponsoring us for over a year now. We couldn't be happier. We're rocking our very own hack5.org on Domain.com's VPS. And truly, it's a great experience. You can get a domain for less than 10 bucks and hosting for five. So go ahead and check them out. Support Hack5 by supporting domain.com. Remember to use coupon code HAK5 at checkout. Get an additional 15% off your order. Your next big idea starts at domain.com. So that just about wraps up this episode of Hack5, but before we get going, you know, we got your emails, check those photos emails. of the week. Emails! I gotta give a shout out to <gasps> Haddock for sending us in some goodness. Check it out. That is some goodness. He says, I hope you enjoy this, guys. Thanks for all the memories. And of course, we'll go oh ahead and my God. Um, Yeah, thank you so much, Haddock. It is oh my God. <laughs> Windows 3.11 <gasps> for work groups. I was like five when these came out. Really? I read <laughs> yeah. this stuff. And MS-DOS 6.22, that's some good stuff. Right, I guess it's 6.2, no, it's 2.2. Anyway, I started on DOS 3.3. Wow. But yeah, this is good stuff, man. Aww. So thank you so much for helping fill out our, uh, our stuff. So, okay, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, and then so. we're gonna check in next week with our friends on their around the U.S. Yay! adventure. Yeah, but we did get some Vegemite, so maybe we'll try that out a little later. Yum. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is it good? Have you tried it? I have no idea. I've never had a Vegemite sandwich, nor have I ever had a Victorian bitter. Okay, Instead, I guess we'll have to try it. Pacifico. On to emails. Let's do emails. Jamie writes, please, please tell us all the parts you use for the cluster nodes in episode 823, please. Oh. And he loves the show. Uh, it's... 
this is the thing that everybody keeps asking about. I thought I addressed it last episode. The Ape Via power supply that we use, that's one U that everybody's crazy about. Seriously, it was just like the cheapest power supply I could find at Fry's. Um, but it's also the smallest. It's an ITX TAC AP250W from Ape Via. Oh. Uh, as far as the Mobo and everything else, I'm pretty sure I covered this. But the motherboard is a. You did, yes. Is cut into. So. Asus PH. P8H67 TAC MLE. Oh it's the least God. expensive Asus motherboard that I could find. It also has that chipset that was recalled, but considering I'm only using one SATA drive on here, it actually doesn't affect it any. Uh, the chip on here, the CPU, is a, um, this is one of the new Sandy Bridge i5s. Oh. So I believe it's the 2500 or the 2500K, and then just whatever the cheapest four gigs of RAM you can find is, and I ended up with a two and a half inch, 250 gig, uh, Western Digital, Scorpio Blue, but really anything will work. Yeah. Oh, cool. It's just run some virtual well, machines. So really it's that. just about the CPU and the RAM. Very nice. At least nice. in this instance. But yes, it's nice. It's nice. Initial Hit writes, you guys should work on meta tagging your episodes based on what is covered and then have a search function for that. I'm having all sorts of issues finding a few older episodes I remember on Android. As I'm just working on one, I want to play with it now. Okay. I totally agree with you. We actually do tag every episode, but dude, I've got a great feature for you guys on the new site. Paul's actually helping us out with this, putting together all of the old segments into individual nice. searchable catalog. And that's going to go segments. under like the gaming and the hacks and stuff like that. Gaming so hacks, IT, uh, some other stuff. If you go to the website and you see oh, that bar so across nice. the top, it really hasn't been populated. It's a, it's a project I tried to do for you. Yeah, ago. I think there were like two things in there so far. <laughs> Paul is saving us, and our website's looking Thank great you, for Paul. it. Thank you, Paul. We love you. Yes. It's true. I love you. Nevermore writes, after the last crack the code challenge, I realized that you could brute force steg files a lot faster if you created multiple concurrent threads to do the work. So I wrote my own script to do just that. It's definitely faster than cipher round script, though not as pretty. I don't have a website or blog, so I pastebinned it at pastebin.com slash bunch of words. Yeah. Oh, and I'm really looking forward to the next one. Dude, thank you so much. I love it when everybody shares code with that. Isn't that the best? That's awesome. Yeah, thanks for sharing <laughs> your code. And yeah, dude, We don't threads. care if it's, it's not pretty. Eh, if it compiles. We still love up. you. Yeah, anything else? Yes, we have one more. Uh, Tim writes, hey guys, I have a question about a possible Dropbox alternative. I have been using Dropbox for about a year now for my paranormal research group. That is really cool. I'm sorry, Ghost Hunters fan. I just totally fangirled. <laughs> it has worked great for sharing case file, paperwork, evidence collections, awesome, etc. I would invest in the pro versions to hold more space, but due to a security concern, each member of our organization has their own account and each person, depending on their position in the company, gets access to certain folders. If I got pro for each person, I would end up spending thousands of dollars a year. Yikes, they have 20 members. So okay. his question is, would there be a better way of sharing files and syncing file versions instantly between users? He's tried Microsoft SkyDrive, but he's also using some Linux machines, which counts that out. Okay, you definitely need to look at this project. It's over at GitHub and it is called LipSync and it's an open source alternative to Dropbox that basically does the same sort of thing using some fun open source stuff that we've cool. talked about in the past, OpenSSH and RSync. RSync is awesome. Why have we not done a feature on that? Um, that will basically do the same kind of thing as Dropbox. Uh, they have some big plans to add versioning and stuff like that. I don't know how far along they are with that, but basically they will allow you to build your own Dropbox alternative. Forget paying those fees, nice. especially for all those users. Huh? Yeah. Just roll your own. That's a lot. Yeah, I hope that helps. Me too. And now for our Technolust photo. Oh, you're so excited. Well, Yay! I saw it and it's really awesome. Isn't the, it? The guy with the, uh, the, the truck and the... Yes. The, yes. the Technolust photo of the week is from Drew. He sent us these photos of his GPS rig that he used on a trip while he was going up north towards Montreal, I believe it was. That is really cool. Yeah. So if you have photos, make sure to share them over at feedback at hack5.org. And we might post them up next week. Also, remember, you can support the show for free, easy. All you have to do is head over to hack5.org, sub subscribe. You'll find all the ways you can get your technos delivered to you on a weekly basis. It's just boom, right there on your desktop, and you can watch, and it's all like, yay! And if you also feel like helping us out, you can check out the brand new Hack Shop. Yay! It's brand new storefront. 
a lot of the same stuff that you've seen before, but we also have some brand new we items. We can't say it right now because we are live streaming about the new items, but uh, just go ahead over there. I think you'll be very pleasantly surprised. You can go over to hack5.org slash store or hackshop.com, H-A-K shop. Yes. All right, cool. Well, that's said and done. I think that brings us to a wonderful ending of this episode. Of course, we value your feedback. Send it over to feedback at hack5.org. Love hearing from you guys. And right now, we are going to say cheers! And trust your techno lust. Cheers! Oh, can I have this now? Yeah, yeah no. I guess so. Hey, real quick, I wanted to let you guys know about the Hack Shop because we just launched a brand new version of it over at hakshop.com. You can still get to it from hack5.org. And it's epic because we've got this beautiful new storefront and I'm so excited to tell you guys that we are offering pre-orders now for the Uber Tooth One. You heard me talk about that with Mike Osman, the inventor over at ShmooCon this year, and I'm so happy that we're gonna have that in stock, ready for you guys to get your Bluetooth sniffing packet loving on. Yes. Okay. Wait, let me make sure my passwords are off there. I wasn't going to crack your LM hash. Uh-huh. Stupid, cheap IKEA crappity crap. He did his computing and his computing. He was offering. Doesn't mod worth a damn. All it's good for is putting photos in. Yours did last minute. Ugh, mine is so much now. Who wants to put a photo? Didn't IKEA understand this was supposed to be made? For computer cases. So now let's thank a mo oh, crap. Let's thank a moment to thank. Hey Jason. What are you doing? <laughs>